بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters to our weekly lesson In this lesson I share verses from Quran and authentic sayings, hadith from the sayings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Quran and the sayings of our Prophet, it is the Sunnah. They are the sources of knowledge in Islam. If I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love me, then I obey him and I obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ Say, if you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, follow my instructions, follow my sunnah. So the Prophet والسلام, was ordered by Allah to say to the believers, if you love Allah, follow my steps. يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ So if I follow the Quran, if I follow the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love me because the sunnah is also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive my shortcomings. If we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love us, then we have to learn Quran. We have to learn the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. It teaches us everything that we need to know in this life. And this is taqwa. You want to be happy? You want to be successful? You want to have peace in your mind, in your heart? You want to be on the right track in your life? Then we have to do it for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ If I have like a brain and I'm using my brain, if I'm using my heart properly, if I sit down and reflect and, I, uh, and ask myself a question, what is right, what is wrong, what is halal, what is haram, then I have to go back to Quran and Sunnah. Be aware that Allah is watching you. The angels are writing everything. So we have to know what we're doing to make sure that we are on the straight path. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ If I want to be successful, if I want to be happy in this life, in the hereafter, if I want to be on the straight path, then I have to obey Allah the way He wants, not the way I want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, مَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَغِ The Prophet, the Messenger, a Rasul is the Messenger. ما على الرسول إلا البلاغ. So Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam, he only tells us what is revealed to him from Allah. It's not from him. It's actually revelation from Allah. والله يعلم ما تبدون وما تكتمون. And Allah says that he knows what we do in public, what we say in public, and he knows Allah knows what I am hiding. Allah knows what's in our hearts. Allah knows what we are thinking about. Allah knows our intention. So we have to make sure that whatever we're doing, we are doing it right and we're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are alive to worship Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him. I worship Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying him, by obeying my prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. May yuti'i rasoola, whoever obeys the messenger, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam is the messenger. فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ He obeyed Allah. So following the steps of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, following the sayings, the instructions of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all verses in Quran to tell us that we have to follow the path of our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. 
If I follow Quran and Sunnah, what's going to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he revealed to us light. Nur is light. Quran and Sunnah is light. It will lighten your heart. It will lighten your path. It will lighten your life. You will have clarity. Everything is clear. You know what you do and you know what you shouldn't be doing and you know why. Sometimes, in some cases, we don't know the wisdom. Though this is haram, we don't know why. Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. But the wisdom is actually Allah wants to see who obeys him, who trusts him and surrenders to him and who argues. So this light that came, وَكِتَابٌ mubin, a clear book, clear instructions. Do this, don't do this. Say this, don't say this. Think like this, don't think like this. Feel like this, don't feel like this. The habits, your lifestyle, your behavior, everything that you do, there is a do and don't. And it is all in Quran and Sunnah. If I obey Allah, if I obey the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, what is the result? Yahdi bihi Allahu man ittaba'a ridwanahu. Allah will guide whomever wants to please him. If you want to please Allah, if you truly love Allah, then Allah will guide you. So first we have to have a clear intention. My intention is to obey Allah, not to obey shaitan. My intention is to obey and surrender to Allah, not to people. We're not here to please people. We respect people. Respecting people is not pleasing them. They are two different things. I please Allah alone, but I respect people. When someone asks me to do something haram, to say something haram, to go to a haram place, I will say, I'm so sorry, I can't. I don't do this because Allah said, the Prophet wasalam, said, they will be angry with me. They will be upset. They will judge me. They call me names. I don't care. I will respect them. I will listen to them. I will not. I will not argue. I will not fight with anyone. I'm not going to have any trouble with anyone. But I will say to them, I'm sorry, I cannot do this because it is haram. I obey Allah. I obey the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I don't obey people. Even if parents ask their son, their daughter to do something haram, they have to tell them, sorry, mom, sorry, dad, I can't do it. Because لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق We do not obey a creature by disobeying Allah. No, I obey Allah. I disobey the creatures, but gently, nicely, in a beautiful manner. We have to be patient. We have to be kind. You don't speak. You don't lecture. You just say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, that's it. No more talking. We're not going to keep talking. We're not going to lecture. We're not going to argue. We're not going to raise up our voice. But my goal is to please Allah alone. Yahdi bihi Allahu man ittaba'a ridwanahu. Whoever pleases Allah, Allah will guide him to what? Subul as-salami. As-salam is peace. Subul as-salam. Subul, not sabil. Sabil is the path, the way. The paths. What paths? It's mentally. It's emotionally. Allah will give you peace. In paths of peace. Subhanallah. So Allah will give you peace mentally, emotionally, Physically, 
Allah will give you peace in your relationship with people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you, insha'Allah, the way to go to the land of peace, Jannah. وَيُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ بِإِذْنِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he will take the believers, the true believers who want to please Allah in the right way, with good manners, nicely, gently. Subhanallah, Allah will take them out of darkness to light. So you want to have clarity, you don't want to be lost, you don't want to be suffocating, you don't want to be suffering deep inside you. You have to know what you want. You have to know what you're doing. وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ Yes, that's what I want. I want to learn Quran. I want to learn the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and I will implement it. I will practice it and I will focus on it. I will focus on me changing me. I'm going to focus on me changing myself. Not focusing on the mistakes of people arguing with them and fighting with them and judging them and exposing them. No. I'm going to focus on me thinking right, feeling right, speaking right, acting and behaving right. This is how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala organizes our life. He organizes your day and night. He organizes the relationship between people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us everything so that we can have a good life. If you really want to have a good life here and in the hereafter, all you have to do is to surrender to Allah. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by himself. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ Yani Allah is swearing by himself. لا يؤمنون. They are not believers. حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم. Until they put you the judge when they disagree. If you disagree with your husband, if you disagree with your sister, if you disagree with your son, if you disagree with anybody, ask a question. What does Allah say in Quran? What does the Prophet والسلام, say? And then follow it. But it has to be an authentic saying because we do not follow the weak hadith. Weak hadith is not a hadith. It's not true. So, okay, now I know the hadith. I, I know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. I know what the Prophet والسلام, says. Knowing is something but accepting it is something else. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا They don't find in their hearts any doubt or dislike. It is something that you're not used to, but you know that Allah wants this. I choose what Allah wants, even if it's out of my way. Even if it is something I've been doing every day for years, if I know that this is haram, I'm going to leave it for the sake of Allah. So if they don't find this, this doubt in their heart and they just accept it and they will try to do it, and then they surrender. That's what we do in this dunya. We surrender to Allah. Allah wants me to pray the five prayers. I will pray the five prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to speak the truth. I will speak the truth. I will not lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders me to cover my body. I will cover my body. I'm not going to show anything from my skin. I'm not going to wear anything tight. I'm not going to wear any attractive colors or adornments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want me to put perfume I love perfume, oh my God, but I will leave the perfume for the sake of Allah because I love Allah more. I'm not allowed to go out with makeup. I will not go out with makeup. It doesn't matter. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will do it and I will do it for him. 
This is a Muslima. A Muslima, my beautiful sister, surrenders to Allah fully, blindly, in his commandments. Do it, we do it. We don't argue. Don't do it, I will not do it. No excuses. A lot of people find excuses not to follow the Quran and Sunnah. No, no. No excuses. I will do it the way it is. Every morning, we say, Every evening we say, Raditu Billahi Rabbah. I am satisfied. I accept. I am fully aware Allah is my God. I surrender to Him. Wabil Islam Dina. I accept Islam to be my religion. I am satisfied with Islam to be my religion. Islam is a way of life, Islam is your habits the words you speak, it's your behavior, it's your lifestyle. Everything that you do, you do it according to Islam. My prophet is my role model. He's my role model in my behavior. I act like him. I sleep as he sleeps. I eat as he eats. I walk as he walk. I talk as he talk. I do everything the way he does. And I learn always how did he live his life so that I can be like him. He is whom I copy. I copy the Prophet. I imitate my Prophet والسلام, in his manners, in his morals, in his values. He is my role model. I just surrender to what he says to me. So this is a believer. A believer is satisfied with Quran and Sunnah, they are satisfied being a Muslim and they love it. Ajaban li amri al-Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, said, Weird, the affairs of the Muslim. Inna amrahu kulluhu khair. Everything about the Muslim is good. In asabathu sarra'u shakar. If he has something, an obstacle, difficulty, a trial, a hardship, Shak um, um sorry the opposite if asabathu sarra sarra is goodness when the believer has goodness when a believer has a um a blessing shakar he thanks allah we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to be always grateful we thank Allah for being Muslims. We thank Allah for being still alive. We thank Allah for being a female. I'm happy being a female. Allah chose that I'm a female. I'm happy to be a, a female. And I will thank Allah for being a female. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any number of kids Allah gives me. I'm happy with it. Even if Allah doesn't want to give me kids, doesn't matter. We can try to have kids medically, I mean medically wise, but again, I am satisfied. We have to be thankful for everything. You have to be thankful for your abilities. You have to be thankful for whatever you have. You have to be thankful for any qualities that you have. Whatever Allah gives us is good and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thanking Allah with the tongue, alhamdulillah, day and night, and thanking Allah by praying, thanking Allah by uh, obeying him. That's good. That is better for the believer to be a thankful person, to have gratitude in your heart, and to enjoy every blessing that you have. And now, if the believer has any difficulty, if the believer has any difficulty, obstacles or th sometimes obstacles or trials are to teach us a lesson maybe i'm doing something wrong so this is the result so i have to learn to change the mistake that i'm doing maybe my sleeping patterns is wrong so i got sick maybe my eating patterns are wrong then then sub something happened maybe we are doing something wrong your body is telling you you're doing something wrong. So you're going to search what is it that I'm doing wrongly. So you can change your habits. You can change your lifestyle. Or maybe the obstacle is because of um, a wrong decision that you are making. If it is a wrong decision, then you have to change your decision. 
maybe you're not doing parenting the the right way as a result you have a conflict with your son with your daughter then you have to learn parenting maybe you have a problem with your husband because maybe you don't have communication skills then you have to learn how to speak to each other and use the right ways maybe you have a problem in in your work because you have the wrong job maybe your job is haram you shouldn't be working it you have to change it or maybe your job is halal but you chose the wrong boss maybe your colleagues are doing something wrong search for the reason sometimes there is something wrong i need to change i have to change some and then everything will be okay so first do your part ask yourself reflect what went wrong change and now you're trying you do things and then something did not maybe change then sabr we choose to be patient we choose to accept we choose to live with it if there is nothing i can do some things my beautiful sisters are out of our control if it is something out of your control don't waste your time don't waste your effort overthinking about it or trying to change it some things are unchangeable your husband for example is emotionally cold your husband doesn't understand emotions instead of trying to fix him and change him adapt emotionally cold people it's not easy for them to change especially if they are in denial if he is willing to learn if he is willing to change good for him but if he is in denial no need to keep arguing with him don't keep fighting with your husband tell him what you want and then accept accept the fact that okay my husband is he doesn't understand emotions talk to him nicely explain to him after explaining if he is still in denial if he says no i have no problem then you have the other choice is to accept inshallah the questions will be after i finish recording bi'idhnillahi ta'ala all right sweetheart thank you so this is what we are going to be doing i want to be from al muttaqin i want to i want to have taqwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna alladhina taqaw those who have taqwa those who are aware that allah is watching them they know the angels are writing they know allah knows how they think how they feel what they speak allah knows their intention allah knows their actions allah knows everything that you're doing allah is aware of it based of knowing that allah is aware of it i need to change to be what allah orders me so i have to change my thoughts i have to change my feelings i have to change the words that i say i have to change my actions and behavior to what allah loves and to what pleases him so those who have taqwa inna alladhina taqaw idha massahum ta'ifun min ash-shaytan if shaytan whispers to them and plays with their emotions tadhakkaru they reflect they remember they remind themselves fa idha hum mubsirun they will reflect they do little bit of self talk why am i feeling low today why am i angry why am i like this why am i overthinking reflect self talk fa idha hum mubsirun a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem if this is shaitan playing with my mind if this is shaitan playing with my emotions a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem straight away shaitan will go away shaitan is not going to stay with you if you remember allah he does not like to be with someone who remembers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's not going to stay with you all right so you have to make sure that you are remembering allah enough to keep shaitan away from you fa idha hum mubsirun they are aware 
As a believer, you have to be aware of yourself inside and outside. Don't live random. Don't live chaos. No, I know what is happening. I know what I need to change. And I'm going to keep practicing now to change it. And we're going to do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man kana yuridu hartha al-akhirati. If you want akhirah, Allah knows you want akhirah. Whoever wants akhirah, if you want the reward in akhirah, Allah will give you the reward. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give you even more. That's why every hasana is not one hasana in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angel on the right to make every hasana you do times from 10 up to 700 hasanat. It's from 10 up to 700, every one hasana. It depends on your intention. It depends how you feel when you do it. I love it. I'm going to do it for the sake of Allah. You accept it. You love it. This is what Allah wants. I'm happy with it. Then you can get for every one hasana up to 700 hasanat. Allah will give you double and triple and more up to 700 if you do it consciously if you do it willingly if you do it with love if you want this dunya you want to please people you want the validation of others we'll give you Allah says he will give you what you want in this dunya. You want money. You want to please people. You want people to love you. Okay, he will give you what you want. But in akhirah, you don't have reward for that. If you want to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you do, you do it for the sake of Allah only. Not because you want someone to love you. You do not want anything in return from people. You only do it for the sake of Allah. When you leave haram, you leave it for the sake of Allah. Not because you are shy from people. Not because you are scared. Not because you do not want people to judge you or to think. I don't care what they think. Let them judge. I do it for the sake of Allah. So a believer knows what she's doing. She's never distracted in this dunya. We want balance. Balance between living this dunya, enjoying it, but preparing for akhirah. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Yes, we're going to work to earn money. Yes, we're going to have children. Yes, we're going to get married. But Allah says, O oh, you who believe, do not get distracted by your children and by your money from remembering Allah. So we are going to remember Allah. We are going to recite the Quran. We are going to pray the five prayers. I am going to do what I have to do. And I'm not going to get distracted with my kids. I'm not going to get distracted in my job because oh, I have to work and then we don't pray. I have to work. My boss wants me to wear color colorful or a pant or whatever. No, we don't do that. We do what Allah wants from us. Whoever gets distracted in dunya, kids, money, obeying the boss, obeying people, and 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 pleasing them, they are the losers they can lose themselves in this dunya they lost their path they are in the wrong path they lost their chance to go to jannah straight away without judgment they lost their chance to be with the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam the losers are not going to be with the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam not all muslims will be with the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam in the day of judgment not all Muslims will go to Jannah straight away. Not all Muslims will go to the highest level of Jannah. Not all Muslims will be under the shade of the throne of Allah in the day of judgment. Not all Muslims will stay only for a few minutes. You have to know what you want in Akhirah. 
the losers are focusing on dunya. The winners, they enjoy this dunya. They enjoy the little things. They are thankful, but they prepare for akhirah. They know what they want here and there. They plan, they practice, they do it. Because wallahi, this dunya, this dunya is going to perish. It's going to go away. Today, tomorrow, after one hour, we will be gone. Subhanallah. When people come in the day of judgment and they will be asked, how much did you, or how many years, how many days, how long have you lived on earth? How many years did you live on earth? People in the day of judgment will feel that they lived a day or part of a day. This is how this dunya is short. This is this dunya is nothing. Don't keep focusing on it. You cannot get everything that you want in this dunya. Accept it. This dunya is not perfect. Don't design a perfect dunya here because it's, it's never going, going to be perfect. It's about you and the way you take it. If you are grateful, you will be grateful for the little things and you will enjoy it. Subhanallah. And you will relax and you will love what you have. In the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ In the day of judgment, يُقْسِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ مَا لَبِثُ غَيْرَ سَاعَةُ The criminals who disobeyed Allah or they, made, they uh, committed the major sins, they are going to swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they only spent one hour. They will think they lived one hour in this dunya. This is how much this dunya is, is going gonna, is gonna to be very short in the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ هِيَ دَارُ الْقَرَارِ Akhira, Jannah, is our destiny. It is where we go to forever. It is our uh, shelter forever. That's where you will live. That's your home Real home is in Jannah, not here. We will leave the houses. We will leave our cars. We will leave our clothing. We will leave our jobs. We will leave this dunya. Everything in it will go away and will perish. We will only take with us hasanat and sayyat. Don't be distracted. Focus on doing the right thing. The right thing is to be always grateful Always think, what can I change to live a better life? Change the, change the way you think. Change the way you feel. Don't try to change circumstances around you. Sometimes all you have to change is the way you think, the way you feel. Sit down with yourself. Relax. Make dua. Remember Allah. Ask Allah to guide you to the best decisions, to the best choices. Change your habits. Learn to have a better lifestyle. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some people, for some people, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ Allah says, if, if he gives blessings to the human being, أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ Some people, when they are, when they are happy, when things are going the way they want, they don't worship Allah properly. I'm happy, they forget themselves. Some people, when they have blessings, they listen to music, they watch the movies, they go out to have fun, they eat and drink, they go out, they waste their time having fun only. They don't remember Allah. They don't recite Quran. They do not pray. They don't cover their body properly. And I'm talking with women. They're celebrating. Oh, she has blessings. She has money. She wants to spend the money. So she will be on her mobile for hours looking at things, shopping, or going to the shopping centers, just 
walking around buying things. And she will post on social media. She will be looking at other people's stories. This is a waste of time. Don't post things when you are happy. Don't post your blessings. Don't get distracted with the blessings. And there are another kind of people. And some people, like when they have difficulty, when they are sick, when they have obstacles, when something doesn't go their way, they become hopeless. They despair. They become annoyed. They become angry. They will be always nagging. They become negative. They will hate people. They will become full of jealousy. They will have grudges against everything in this dunya because it is not going their way. It's not going our way. It will never be the way we want it fully. This life will never be perfect the way we want. Your husband is not going to be the way you want. Your kids are not going to be fully the way you want. Your, your friends are not going to be fully the way you want. Your family, your life, everything, subhanAllah, it is, it's, not, it's never going to be perfect. I will be grateful. I will enjoy the good things of them. I will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. We, are have, we have to be patient. We have to accept. We have to be satisfied with things that are not in, in our control. فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَى سَبِيلًا Allah knows who is on the straight path. Allah knows who made the right decisions. So always reflect. Always think right. Don't allow things to take you. No, you have to be aware of everything that's happening around you. You're not feeling good. Don't try to do something to, 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 to feel better. No, don't do haram. Make sure that you're doing something halal, inshallah. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah will be pleased with you and inshallah he will be. Because some women, when she is not feeling good, she thinks, okay, let me go and have fun. Let me go and do something like you know, laser and exposing her body and put piercings and beautifying herself. I'm not feeling good. Let me go and do plastic surgery to change the way I look. Maybe I will feel better. Emotions have nothing to do with the, with the, when Allah created you, he created you in the best picture. Allah created you and he loves the way you look. It's not the look, it's the emotions. We have to accept the way we look and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah will give you the peace that you want. Don't go further in the wrong way. So now it's about our habits. It's about our things. Wearing something that is uh, haram, like whether it is uh, tight or... Uh, beautifying yourself but there is also another thing like some Muslims uh, when it comes to their clothing they can wear like um, uh, outfits or like a shirt or a dress with uh, with uh, pictures like animals or birds on them that's also not halal there are things about our um, habits I want to share with you that we have to keep away from haram we have to keep away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, when he's not pleased with us no we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us the like in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger وَيَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَهُ and and goes beyond halal to the haram, this person will go to hellfire. 
خالدا فيها is for the person who changes halal and haram according to their desires. A Muslim does not say this is halal, this is haram according to what they think. We don't say what is halal and what is haram based on what we hear. We have to take halal and haram from Quran and Sunnah. I'll give you three examples here. Three examples that people do without realizing that this is not acceptable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, yes, Allah says in Quran, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ If the Prophet ordered you to do something, then do it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ If he said this is haram, naha means he said don't do it. فَانْتَهُ Then stop doing it. One of the things is having a dog. <laughs> it's a trend now all muslims want to have a dog now a puppy i know he is so cute of course they are cute i know we love dogs we don't hate them it doesn't mean we hate the dogs no we love the dogs they are so cute but we can't have them inside the house okay. do you want peace we were talking about peace do you want peace Peace comes to your house by having the angels in your house. If you have angels in your house, then you have peace. Because angels will bring you barakah, blessings. Angels will make dua for you. Angels will ask Allah to forgive you. Angels will protect you. You have either angels or devils in your house. You have to choose one of them. They can't be both together. I'm not talking about the angels who write. The writers, they never leave you one second. Wherever you go, whatever you do, they are with you. They are writers. Because you're doing something haram doesn't mean they will leave you. No, the writers are different. They will stay with you all the time. I'm talking about the angels in general. There are angels just roaming in the streets, going everywhere, searching for someone who recites Quran, searching for a lesson where people remember Allah and learn Islam, searching for someone who is praying and remembering Allah to go and provide them with peace and to protect them. So here, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, لا تدخل الملائكة الملائكة angels they don't enter. So the angels do not enter a house fihi kalbun where there is a dog wala sura or a picture. Okay. So the if there is a dog, any dog, any dog, even puppy, even puppy, even the cute, even the cute. We're not allowed to have dogs inside the house. You can have a dog outside just for if there is, you live in a farm, you need a dog for guarding because some, some, sometimes we need a dog to, to look if a thief or if someone, a stranger comes, they start barking. So we can have it. So a dog, because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man kalban. Whoever owns a dog, to have the dog inside your house, even inside or outside, Man means whoever owns. So in this hadith, he didn't say if you have a dog inside the house. He said, whoever owns a dog, except the dog, that you use when you are doing for the shepherd. A shepherd needs a dog to keep the sheep and the, 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 the goats together. So if you are a shepherd and you need a dog that's allowed, a dog for hunting, they used to use the dogs for hunting. 
فإنه ينقص من أجره كل يوم قيراطا If a person owns a dog Except the dog for hunting Or a dog for a shepherd Or a dog for In a farm for like um, To guard the, uh, the place Then you will lose This person who owns the dog Will lose Qiratan from his reward From the hasanat What is qiratan? In another hadith, he explained what is the qirat. The Prophet ﷺ said, if a Muslim prays Salatul Janazah, a Muslim dies and you pray Salatul Janazah, then you have a qirat. The reward is qirat. Qirat is that you're going to have hasanat like the mountain of Uhud because the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is Qirat, Ya Rasulullah? He said, it is Hasanat, like the mountain of Uhud. So he explained the meaning. And then he said, and if a Muslim man follows the janazah to the barrier, to bury it, to the burial, then he have another Qirat. So for women, we pray Salatul Janazah, and we will have Qirat. But for men, they pray Salatul Janaza and they go to bury the Muslim dead person. We don't go to the burial, all right? So only men go to bury a Muslim dead man or woman. So if a person owns a dog, they will lose a mountain of Hasanat, a mountain like the mountain of Uhud. That's a lot. And he said, Qiratan, you will lose two Qiratan, means two mountains like Uhud Hasanat. Good deeds like two mountains the size of Uhud. That's all together? No, that's Kullayawm, every day. Imagine losing two mountains of Hasanat every day. Because he is so cute. The dog is so cute. I don't care. He's cute. I don't care. I'm not going to lose my hasanat. I will not lose two mountains of hasanat because the puppy is cute. I'll have them in Jannah, inshallah. In Jannah, the dogs will be halal. I will wait until the day of judgment. I will wait until I go to Jannah and I'm going to have that cute puppy there. Because he's going to be halal there, inshallah. But in this dunya, I will not risk it. I will not lose my hasanat just because he is cute. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that he was, um, he had an appointment with Jibreel ﷺ, but Jibreel ﷺ did not come. So he then saw him outside and he said to him, why didn't you come? Jibreel alayhi salam said, inna we, so he's talking about angels, we, angels, la nadukhulu baytan fihi kalbun wala sura. We do not enter a house where there is a dog or a picture. So the Prophet alayhi salatu was like, a dog, but I don't have a dog. And he didn't have a picture either. But there was a puppy that sneaked, subhanAllah. A puppy sneaked inside the room of the Prophet والسلام, and he was hiding under the cover. And then Jibreel, um, the Prophet والسلام, asked Aisha, عنها, he was with Aisha, he said to her, Mata dakhala hadha al -kalb? Did you see the dog? Did you allow the dog to come? So Aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, she said, Wallahi ma daraytu bihi. Wallah, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't seen him. I did not allow him in. And he was a puppy, subhanAllah. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam um, made the, like he let him go out. So now we know from these ahadith and they are all authentic ahadith three and there are others as well but I'm, I'm only going to tell you these three because they have the same meanings 
So the dog is Hasana. The angels are not going to enter the house where there is a dog. If the angels do not enter, then the devils will be there, definitely. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تدخل الملائكة بيتا فيه تماثيل أو تصاوير. Now about the picture. In the house that has pictures or statues, which is for animals, human beings, or birds, anything that has a soul, animal, bird, insect, they... The angels do not enter that house. So what do we do? What about the clothing? What about the outfit? Can I buy for my kids clothing with animals, a cat, uh, whatever pictures on them? The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تدخل الملائكة بيتا فيه صورة The angels do not enter a house where there is a picture إلا رقم في ثوب ثوب is an outfit except rakmun a um uh, like a, a decoration the decoration but without a soul in a um uh, in the outfit so you can have circles triangles whatever uh, and you can have uh, flowers you can have fruits and vegetables is okay. Buy for your kids, let them wear them. The sheet beds. Don't buy covers with animals or human beings and put it on the bed if you want the angels to enter the room of your son, of your daughter. You want the angels to protect them. You want the devils to keep away because as I said, you either have angels or devils. You cannot have both. If you have angels, you don't have devils. If you have devils, the angels are not there. You choose according to your habits. I'm not going to have any pictures. I'm not going to have any statue. Some people put the pictures on frames from the wedding or the father or the mother, even if the parents are dead. You have pictures of loved ones. You have pictures for yourself, pictures for your kids. Put it in the album. Put it in the drawer, put it in the box and cover it. If it is shown, if it is displayed in the room, on the table, in a frame, or you hang it on the wall, if you enter the room and you can see a picture or a statue of an animal or a bird or a human being, then there are devils, there are no angels. Pictures. Put them inside a box. Pictures, photos of the family, photos that you love, keep them in a box inside the cupboard, in the drawer. Don't display them, don't hang them on the walls or in frames or on the tables. Because if you want the angels to enter your house. A lot of people say, there are a lot of problems in my house. We are all angry. We have a lot of clashes. We are not feeling the blessings. Why? Because there are no angels. If you put music in a house, the, the devils will be there. If there is haram things in a house, then the devils will be there. Angels do not enter the house where there is haram, um, loud or seen. We have to be careful. If you buy anything for your kitchen, for your living room, for the bedroom, buy things with flowers or decorations that doesn't have human beings or animals or birds or anything with a soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep devils away from us, away from our families, away from our houses. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us everything that we do so that we can be with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the day of judgment and to go with him inshallah to Jannah straight away. We do not argue. We have to accept the 
authentic sayings of the Prophet والسلام, and not to go and search for excuses or uh, or is there any exceptions, no exceptions at all. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي آيَاتِ اللَّهِ If someone argues when there is a proof from Quran and Sunnah بِغَيْرِ سُلْطَانٍ أَتَاهُمْ If someone argues without a proof إِنْ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ إِلَّا كِبْرٌ مَا هُمْ بِبَالِغِهِ Then these people are searching for excuses or exceptions because they don't want to um, surrender to the instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet. فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ Ask Allah to protect you. Ask Allah to guide you. Ask Allah to keep away from you. Haram. And people who want you to do haram. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Allah can hear us. Allah can see us. Allah knows what we want. Allah knows our intention. We want to obey Allah. We want to surrender to him until we go to Jannah, inshallah. When you go to Jannah, my beautiful sisters, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to think. You don't have to plan. You will have, inshallah, a beautiful life there forever. Forever. We need to go to the highest level of Jannah. That's our goal. Let's focus on being from the people of the highest level of Jannah. We do not want to be judged. In the day of judgment, we want our hasanat to be heavier than our sayyat. If my sayyat are heavier, then the person will go to Jahannam. Then the person will be judged. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to go to Jahannam not even one second. We have to have the hasanat heavier. It is so risky to say, oh, no, I am doing hasanat. But you, you don't know if you are keeping them. Maybe you are making hasanat, but then you are losing them. The challenge is not making hasanat. The challenge is keeping the hasanat. Are you sure that you're making hasanat and you're keeping them? You can lose the hasanat as easy as having a dog in the house and then every day two mountains of uh, of hasanat are leaving my scale of hasanat pictures and every haram word we say every haram we do every haram place we go we are just going we are giving away our hasanat we do not want to give away one hasan keep your hasanat for yourself do the right thing, my beautiful sisters. Allah knows what is better for us. We trust him fully. We surrender to him. This is how we worship him. We obey him. We love what he loves. And we hate what he hates. We, we will be where he wants us to be. That's how we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sincerity. May Allah accept from us all our deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us Islam the way he wants, not the way we desire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the strength to stay on the right path, inshallah, to be on the straight path, to be with our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the day of judgment. May Allah accept from all of us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته